But now I'd like to say a few words about how we're looking at DNA methylation changes in, 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 in neonatal blood spots, or at least associations with environmental risk variables. So for this analysis, we're, we're, we've already run the Illumina HD450 on around 250 cases and 250 controls. And these are the same leukemia, these, are the, these Guthrie cards and the cases are from the same leukemias that we performed the, the, the diagnostic blast cell leukemia DNA methylation patterns that I just showed. The way that, we, that we're going about analyzing the, the neonatal blood spot data is to first analyze association with environmental risk variables in the controls only. So in the next slide, I'll show uh, associations between, between uh, questionnaire-derived variables associated with parental smoking, including uh, maternal and paternal sm ever-never smoking, uh, the, the numbers of cigarettes, and at different locations before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and after pregnancy. So I realize this is a busy slide, but what this slide is, uh, is portraying Along the, the x-axis here are the expected uh, minus log 10 p-values that would be expected by chance if we did 480,000 <coughs> comparisons. We would obviously expect a lot of low p-values. And this is the, the distribution of, of those expected. Here is the observed log minus 10 log 10 p-values here. And what we see for a lot of these variables like this one, this is passive smoking in the home after a child is born is that there really is no divergence of the expected and the observed p-values uh, all along here. And for this one, you might expect there not to be an association because this is, this is smoking, a, a variable of smoking after birth, and, but what we're looking at with Guthrie cards is, is methylation patterns at birth. So wouldn't expect that to be associated or maternal ever smoking. If the, if the mother's not smoking at the time of pregnancy or near pregnancy, you wouldn't expect an association, and you don't see one. But we do see that for some of these variables, there, there's a divergence off the line of, of, of no difference, uh, such as maternal smoking during pregnancy. There is a divergence here, mother smoking while breastfeeding. That's a postnatal variable, obviously, but it, it may be, it, it is highly associated with maternal smoking during pregnancy. Here's maternal smoking in the three months before pregnancy and the numbers of, of cigarettes. So what we did to try to rank these various variables is use a, a, a test called a tail strength test. And as, as, as its name implies, it kind of measures the, the, uh, the strength of this, of this tail away from the the line of no difference here. And in ranking these, these variables by tail strength, this is the tail strength, this is the, the variable. Our, our top predictor here is maternal, numbers of cigarettes smoking uh, by mothers during pregnancy. And then the number two is paternal smoking in the three months before pregnancy. And if, um, don't I don't know if Catherine didn't show the data today, she did sh show some data yesterday showing that one of the most consistent associations that we see in our California Childhood Leukemia Study, when we look at smoking variables, are the combination between paternal smoking prior to pregnancy and maternal smoking uh, when, after a child is born. And so these are, these are kind of, this, this one is highly associated with maternal smoking after, after, after birth, and they ended up being the top variables here whereas some other, other variables like uh, father, paternal ever, ever never smoking, passive smoking after birth, had very weak tail strength. So there may be some, uh, it's an indication that there may be, there may be some uh, relevance or, or some effect here from smoking and DNA methylation patterns. This slide is simply, to sh simply shows that there is some targeting to these methylation changes. So out of the 2,000 loci that have changed or are associated with numbers of cigarettes uh, by the, smoked by the mother during pregnancy, these uh, tend to be overrepresented in, in CPG islands, and they tend to be uh, CPG islands in promoter, promoter regions. And I don't have a slide for it, but there's also an extremely strong p-value 
on the direction of methylation change. And that direction was a, a loss of methylation. So uh, mater both maternal and paternal smoking are associated with decreased methylation overall around the genome. And this is consistent with other studies uh, that, have, that have seen the same thing. So I think we're seeing a real effect. So we're not quite ready to publish this analysis. And in fact, we're going to do it all again. Uh, and I'll show you why in the next few slides. So very recently, we've become aware, and we've become aware because we started to work with uh, some, other, some other statisticians who, who work in the, the DNA methylation field, uh, namely Andy Hausman at Oregon State. Who, Andy works with Carl Kelsey and, and John Winky, who's also long-term collaborators with us. And what, what Andy tried to do is, is take a look at, at what may be a problem in, in all of this analysis or, or a confounder here. And that, that potential confounder is the effect of DNA methylation on the levels of specific blood cell types. So when we look at DNA methylation in, in a Guthrie card, we're actually looking at the average methylation of many different types of white cells, T cells, B cells, granulocytes, natural killer cells, monocytes. So if, if there was, is an environmental association with methylation, it may simply be an environmental association with one of these cell types. If we lose one of these cell types or enhance one of these cell types, it's going to affect the average methylation pattern that, that we're observing here uh, in a blood spot. We have no way of pulling out these different cell types. Either, you know, there's, there's no way of uh, separating cells that have dried on a blood card, just as there's no way of, of separating blood cells if you've frozen a, a vial of blood without uh, the proper t preservation techniques for, for cells. So we need another way of, of assessing different cell types or cell mixtures in, in, um, in, in these, these blood populations. So what we've done is, is create a reference panel of, of uh, pure blood cells. So this was a uh, pure T cells, B cells, monocytes, granulocytes. And running, these were run on the same platform, the same Illumina platform. And what Andy did was take, take the top 100 CPG loci, which could distinguish these, these different cell types, and simply look at those uh, 100 CPG cell sites and apply those to other, to other blood cells, including, including these, these these uh, Guthrie cards to, to predict or model the levels of different cell types in Guthrie cards. So this is the, the way it worked out for, uh, if we put all of our neonatal blood spots together, and uh, Ritu, Ritu Roy is actually doing this analysis in our lab now with, uh, with help from Andy. And what this shows is uh, each these are box and whisker, whisker plots, and each data point uh, corresponds to one individual, uh, and, and it's, it shows its, its level of, of these specific cell types predicted by DNA methylation pattern. And what you can see is that the, the, the levels, the levels or the proportions of cells here are about what you would expect in, in, a, in a blood cell population that went through a, a complete blood count. So we think that the methylation patterns are are illustrating uh, a bit of truth, uh, hopefully, and being able to to predict or or um, or model blood cell types will give us a way to individually correct for blood cell differences between our our subjects in our population as we do our analyses with environmental variables. So this is this is something we will we'll take this this cell mixture data and go back and, and redo the the analysis on smoking. We've already, and I'm not going to show you today, but we've already done uh, preliminary analyses on pesticides, folic acid, gestational age, uh, birth weight corrected for gestational age. We're going to redo all these analyses correcting for blood cell mixtures. And over, this will, this will occur over the next couple of months. We will, we will then be able to create a list of CPG sites that are associated with these these uh, these 
uh, epidemiologically derived variables and then do a replication analysis. And we already have a set of, uh, a unique set of 250 cases and controls in CCLS. Those DNAs are ready to go, so it's our, it's our uh, plan to do that replication analysis uh, late this year or early next year and uh, hopefully confirm or replicate a lot of these CPG sites with environmental variables. Uh, I should also mention this cell mixture analysis revealed something else that's, that's kind of interesting. This table, I'm um, sorry it's not lining up very well, but these are, these are if we look at the populations of, of our Guthrie card cases for controls and controls and compare compare the different blood cell types, case versus controls. These are the coefficients and these are p-values. The only significant p-value here is for B-cells and we see more B-cells, predicted more B-cells in the cases versus the controls. And this is quite consistent on what we would predict uh, for uh, cases, ver cases ver versus controls. Since these, are, these children grow up to get B-cell leukemia, they may have an enhanced B cell proliferation at birth. Uh, the, the GWAS, the alleles that uh, have, have been shown to enhance risk for leukemia are low function alleles in B cell transcription factors. So they're predicted to actually keep B cells uh, in, a, in a less mature state for a longer time than, uh, than their, their normal variants. Which would, which would lead to an enhanced B cell count at, at any particular point in life, such as we see here. And this is, this is an observation where we're, we're trying to follow up using a different method besides DNA methylation. Uh, and the, the method that we chose was simply to, to look at CD19 levels in Guthrie cards. We, we can extract proteins from, from cards and uh, assess protein levels by ELISA, and that's what we're doing with CD19 right now. <clears throat> and uh, just winding up this talk with uh, reminding uh, everyone of, of our holy grail here, which is to get these methylation marks that are um, involved in, in both leukemia and environmental risk variables. And the way we wrote this grant was really to, to we had this, this, uh, this field of 480,000 CPG sites, and really we're putting them through filters. So we're, we're filtering out all the CPG sites that don't change. They, they're always the same. And, 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 and previous cells, leukemias, don't, and gut cards, they don't change with the environment. That, that takes away most CPG sites. And then we can take away other CPG sites that, uh, that may be changing in leukemogenesis, but have nothing to do with, with the environmental risk variables. And we can filter out other, other CPG sites that are related to the environment, but have nothing to do with, uh, with B cell development or leukemia. And finally, we hope to have a, a sweet spot of, of CPG sites, which are, are involved in, in both leukemia and the environment. <clears throat> 